Hey guys, Mike, your uh, host of Craft Beer Storm, and it's Friday. That means we do craft brew news. I just came back from the Great American Beer Festival, which was awesome, and I, uh, you know, saw that Brewbound actually did an article on it. So this is courtesy of Brewbound dot com. I just want to kind of go through it, and I have Allo on the line. Allo uh, Glinski, he's the craft beer concierge. How you doing, hey, Allo? Michael? How's it going? Hey, man, that's cool. And we reconnected. Um, you know, he used to be here. He did Pints of Portsmouth. And, and now you're out in, in, in California doing some good things. I'm all over the place. I came from Boston out to San Diego where I completed a year and a half at beer school. You can go to school for beer now. And now up in Northern California, my original neck of the woods. And I work for Russian River Brewing Company in their tasting room and running tours. Wow. That's awesome. You work for them. That's so cool. It's great to be able to get a job there right out of beer school. I certainly can't complain. Man, that's cool. But in this, this article, they talk about the um, Great American Beer Festival. Um, you know, it was about 60,000 people that attended last week's Great American Beer Festival in Denver. Uh, the two, 2019 edition um, of the National Trade Group uh, Brewers Association is the largest consumer-facing event. Uh, may mark the last in which beer is the only alcoholic beverage. Um, leaders of the not-for-profit uh, trade group told Brewbound that discussions are ongoing about opening up future festivals to other alcoholic beverages beyond beer, uh, and you know, including hard seltzer. Hard seltzer is crazy, man. Like White Claws is killing it. I mean, how's hard seltzer out there? I mean, is it, it's probably blowing up. Hard, uh, hard seltzer is everywhere. Uh, White Claws is killing it, as you said. I think it's really popular. It's a great beer for. Sorry, it's a great product for outings. And I think it's going to be blowing up everywhere, especially when the hotter months are in store. Because that's, you know, White Claw is dominating the market, but um, uh, Boston Beer Company is uh, made truly, and they're uh, they're uh, coming up as well. I mean, between the both of them, I think it's like 75% of the market, hard seltzer market. And all the craft breweries locally are dabbling in it, too. I see some breweries out in Boston, some breweries out in California who are now coming out with hard seltzer options. Maybe they're not canning them, but they're having them on tap as an option. Apples. They'll probably have cider out there too, I guess. And Cider's huge. I'm in Apple Country out here, and we have um, Golden State Cider Company and Ace Cider is from my hometown, Sebastopol. So cider's huge out here as well. Man, there's no shortage of drinking options. No, it's great. We have the wineries. You have everything out there. It's awesome. And um, and and uh, on the floor of the uh, Great American Beer Festival, although, although there seemed to be room on the floor this year, lines were jammed up. Sections where popular brewers, including Russian River, where you work, um, the Lost Abbey, Avery Brewing, Weldworks, I hear good things about Weldworks, and then Rheingeist Brewery uh, were there as well. And then Brooklyn Brewery made a um, statement in its booth highlighting its non-alcoholic beer called Special Effects which will launch in select markets this fall before hitting the company's 30-state footprint. So they're out there, too. They're, they're... That's, that's wild. That's a huge footprint to launch right into with an non-alcoholic beer, but that's a Brooklyn brewery. I mean, I guess people are trending. You know what's, ki- you know what's killing it? The Michelob Ultra. They're Think selling so? crazy amounts of Michelob Ultra. It's nuts. Because it's a sessionable beer. It, well, it's below session. was like 2% or something. But they they're uh, they're marketing it as like kind of an athletic beer, like if you're an athlete or something, you can drink sure. a beer. And it's they're selling crazy amounts of it. It's nuts. It all comes down to branding at the end. Branding and marketing; those are the keys to selling product, and the product has to be good too, or it has to be what the consumer wants. It has to be what the consumer wants. I don't know. That, that's a great marketing thing that they have there. So. <laughs> But also on, uh, they had Pernod Ricard, uh, Jameson Irish whiskey. They have, they they're coming out. With, they came out with cask mates, uh, which which is excellent. It's just they take barrels, um, they give them to breweries. The breweries condition the beer in them, and then they take them back and they fill them again with whiskey. And they yep. create these. Green cans. Flash down in San Diego, where I was, they did a cask mates edition beer. I didn't get a chance to try it, but I know that they were one of the first to be able to do that. They have breweries around the country doing that. I didn't even know that. I thought it was just a couple, you know. Actually, I have. I still have the email from uh, Jameson when I sent them an email like five years ago. And I said, hey, can I get a barrel? And they're like, oh, no, we don't do that. <laughs> you might want to email them again. Mike. I have the email. <laughs> I talked to the guy. I said, dude, I, I sent you an email five years ago. You said no. And now you have this freaking 
they had a pavilion at the freaking they had a, like a I don't know how like a hundred by a hundred square foot pavilion just with the breweries it was ridiculous um, even more than that probably like 200 by 200 something like that but um, and then Sierra Nevada founder uh, Ken Grossman was there and he uh, kicked off the uh, Thursday GABF session showing his legendary Chico California headquartered craft breweries first brew house I think he he had it and then he sold it and then he bought it back and now he's going on tour with it so like, this is the original brew house because it's their 40th anniversary and I think they want to be able to celebrate that and that's cool. And they're doing good things, you know. They had they're the, doing uh, some great things. They had the collaboration uh, beer uh, when they had the fires up there. And they, they gave back to the community. You know, they, um, they what they did is they just had uh, brewers, you know, they wanted them to give 100% of the proceeds of the beer uh, and then just send it off to uh, send it off to this region in California that was destroyed by fires. It was really wonderful. And being a, being a native Californian, I can't thank them enough for their efforts for the fires that were, were really devastating up here. But that's the, the brewing community comes together. It's awesome, you know? That's one of my favorite parts about beer is the community aspect. It's why I'm still in beer and want to be in beer for as long as I can be. And that's why I'm in it too, man. I mean, I mean all these brewers, they're great people, you know? No secrets. And, um, you know, what do you need? Uh, you need some grain. You need some yeast. I got it. Come on over. Come and grab it. No problem. You know, it's, it's, it's excellent. Advice is freaking awesome. Um, and they're saying the best... Best booth of the year, <clears throat> according to Brewbound, was uh, New Belgium. It really? Did, it did stand out. You know, it was like a – they put together the festival's most eye-catching booth and the double-sided stand included a fat tire branded ski lodge bar on one side wow. complete with a bubble hockey game. And then the other side uh, featured a more traditional bar along with a photo booth called the mini bar. Take and some selfies there, Michael. I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. But I saw. I told you. I saw uh, Firestone Walker. I saw David Walker there. We got that's really uh, cool. I had a picture. Be a rock star him. moment. I'm telling you, man. I'm like, I, that's him. That's him. Because like, I, ha- I had him on the like podcast. Like Yeti, <clears throat> it's the Loch Ness monster. Cra- it's crazy, right? Crazy. Um, they also had Sam Calagione. I don't know if he says it that way, but that's the way you say it in Italian. He leads the Boston. We say it in Boston, right? Yeah, he leads. Uh, yeah, Boston Beer's annual br- breakfast. So apparently, a Jim Cook goes there every year and does that. But now they merged. Um, so Boston Beer Company founder Jim Cook's thirty-five year streak of attending GABF was broken this year. Oh wow! And then Coke was um, Cook was uh, noticeably absent from Friday's annual breakfast with members of the media. I didn't go to that. Actually, I wasn't there. My my flight got screwed up and I had to fly in the next day otherwise I probably would have gone although he did appear uh, via a pre-recorded video from Munich where he was selecting hops so I guess he's out in Munich getting hops he's for he's always beer. involved in beer no matter where he is I'm sure he has lots of lots of places to be and not enough Jim Cook to be there I guess he said he picked up the phone like you know Sam are you going to be there alright no problem just go because they're merged now. They're like one company. So in Cookstead... I think it's, I think it's great. I think yeah. the merger is really, really wonderful for the beer community. It is. I mean, they're two great uh, breweries, and they came together, and it's it's strength in, um, you know, like um, collaborating and, you know, uh, like making it more efficient to get beer brewed and then out there. You know, anything... You it was a win-win do. for both sides, in my eyes. Yeah, I think so. And it said... Um, they have a. They did a beer together. It's a Samuel Adams and Dogfish Head uh, collaboration called Collab Beeration, and it's a continually a continually hopped pilsner brewed with honey from Brooklyn and Zambezi. <laughs> so uh, I don't know where Zambezi is, but uh, the beer will only be available um, starting uh, October 11th at Sam Adams Tap Room in the Boston's Jamaica Plain neighborhood. And at Dogfish Head's tap room at Milton, Delaware. So they're just they're brewing it, but it's only going to be at the tap rooms. Well, you'll have to get down to Jamaica Plain and snag me some, Michael. You'll have to you'll have to you know sneak it over to me in California. So I'll I have to ship some out that. to you. Although if I did, well, if I did it by the mail, it'd be I a won't family. Tell. I won't tell anybody. Okay, we won't talk about it. But and then Boston Beer also announced the return of Utopias. It's the biennial extreme beer. Have you had that or? 
I've never had it. Nope. I've had it at the festival there. They they had some, not in this year, but in previous years, and it's like twenty eight percent ABV. Like it's crazy. that thing is like a cognac. You gotta have a snifter, right? You can't just drink a pint sure. of that. You'll you'd be on the floor. <laughs> Which the company claims is illegal in fifteen states. Apparently, <laughs> That's you can't wild. call it a beer. I guess right? It's an extreme beer. Sure. The beer will release in select markets on October fifteenth for a suggested real retail price of two hundred and ten dollars a bottle. Hey, my birthday's October 16th. It's right in time. Any of you listening out there, Aloe's birthday present, Utopias. www.aloe.com. we got to give you your, your right. uh, <laughs> how to find you. The beer concierge, right? Craft beer concierge. Go on there. Um, That's where you can find me. And the beer's going to be on tap at Sammy Adams Tap Room in Cincinnati during an anniversary event on October, uh, November 15th. Wow. And then um, Caligione also announced 2020 release of Worldwide Stout, which is very popular and has been aged in Utopia's barrels. Holy mackerel! Wow, I will be looking. Out That's going to be out of control. They're, they're making some good stuff, man. This is this is a good collaboration. I like I it. I like it. I like it. Um, they talk about some winners. Um, there was uh, 318 medals awarded. And a total of 283 breweries won the medals this year. That's great. And then uh, the most entered category was uh, Juicy or Hazy IPA. Surprise. I'm not surprised one bit. And Chicago's Old Irving Brewing's Breezer took home the gold in that uh, category. And then other gold medal winners included, uh, from the most entered style categories, included Denver-based Comrade Brewing Company's More Dodge Less Ram that they they named it more Dodge Less Ram. I just did an episode on it because uh, there was like a, a Dodge truck that slammed into their brewery like in 2016. Oh, said, that's a funny well, story. Let's make a beer out of it. So they did. And then they freaking won a medal. <laughs> they won a gold medal. <laughs> Winning the American Style IPA and then Austin-based Elmo Brewing's Roxanne winning for a fruited American Style Sour Ale. That should be interesting. Indianapolis-based Blind Owl Breweries Parliament Drive, winning for German-style Pilsner, and Salinas, California-based Alvarado Street Breweries Double Cone, winning for Imperial IPA. They make good I've stuff, I've had too. Double Cone. It's it's pretty delicious. They are awesome breweries and awesome stuff and awesome beer. Yeah, congrats to all those medal winners. It's, it's great. It's great to see all the diversity in the beer and the winners coming out. So how many breweries? I think there's like a thousand breweries in California where you are. Uh, there's got to be at least that. I don't know the specific statistics, but I know San Diego County had 160 of them and counting alone in a two-hour stretch of county. My so God. A thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred wouldn't surprise me one bit. Man, that's just crazy. But they, you know, hey, they're all doing well. They're making great beer. I love going to the Pacific. They have the, the sections in the uh, Great American Beer Festival. And, um, you know, they have Northeast, uh, you know, New England, they have, you know, whatever, Great Lakes, and then they have Pacific, which is California, but all the right. beers in the Pacific section are really awesome, man. It's really great to be able to see regionally, or region by region, what these different breweries are yeah. doing. But I've had great, great beers. I went on all, all the regions, and, and they're all really great beers. You know, I haven't had, I didn't have a beer that I didn't like. I mean, they're very good. So sure. people are doing really great stuff out there, the, the craft brewers, and we're trying to promote them through... Uh, our Craft Beer Store podcast. Hey, if you're a brewer and you're listening or you know a brewer, you want to get him on, send me an, uh, an email, michael at craftbeerstorm.com. Um, if you like what we're doing, you like our podcast, go on to iTunes, uh, give us a rating, give us a review. That's the only way we get up in uh, the rankings. You know, we are getting more and more downloads monthly, which is cool. Uh, but we got a lot a lot more to go and uh, we're trying to give you the best we can, bring you, bring you good people like Aloe, who's very knowledgeable about beer. And, um, yeah, I got to do some stuff with Aloe, too. We got to do some collaborations on stuff. There's a lot of stuff to do out there. And you're going for your Cicerone, right? I'm going for my Cicerone. Hopefully within the next year I'd love to sit that exam. And just In the meantime, soaking in as much information as I can in the beer world wherever I can and from whoever I can. Just explain Cicerone quickly for people who don't know. Cicerone is the beer equivalent of the sommelier. So uh, sommelier is the master of wine. The Cicerone is the master of beer. And there are four different levels 
the, the level I'm studying for is the second level, which is the certified Cicerone, and it's still a very rigorous three- to four-hour exam that people do take years to study for, and it's comprehensive everything from proper service to proper glassware to food and beer pairings to history of styles and where beer comes from. That's fantastic, man. That's great. Wow. There's so much information out there and so much knowledge to be had. But I'm beer, enjoying every minute of studying. Beer is great, and if, if you can make a career out of it, that's fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm doing the podcast, and I've had a brewery. I'm a brewer, right? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I got my base down, and now it's just uh, going going up from here. This is just a lot of knowledge that has to be transferred to people who really don't even know about craft beer. I think it's just a buzzword, and they... To hear IPA, it's like, all right, let me have an IPA. I'm like, do you know what IPA is? Like, no, but it's supposed to be a good thing. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. (laughs) We have to educate people. We do, and people hopefully want to be educated in the same way, and there's so much out there to teach and to learn from other people as well. I'm sure. All right, Allo, thank you very much for doing the um, Craft Brew News segment uh, this week with me. Uh, And we we did also a feature um, podcast on Allo. And uh, where, where can people reach you if they want to reach you? They can go to my blog. It's www.thecraftbeerconcierge.com, or you can follow me on Instagram, Craft Beer Concierge. I have a Facebook page out there. That is my social media handle where I talk about all things beer, exploring beer and food pairings, beer itineraries around the U.S., and just my general knowledge and passion for beer. That's cool. All right, Al. I'm glad we reconnected and um, we would do some things. And uh, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Not a problem, Michael. Talk to you later. All right, man. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you on Monday with our next. Uh, I have snippets from uh, uh, GABF. Got some sound bites. A lot of good stuff. And we'll we'll splice those together and get them out for you on Monday. All right. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. Mm-hmm.